What's up guys, it's Dr. Price, and I'm here to help you prepare for the USMLE. I'm the CEO and founder of Action Potential Mentoring, and I'm currently in vascular surgery. So let's get this started. Thank you again for joining, and let's learn, and let's get better together. Sideroblastic anemia can present with isoniazid use. Okay, so sideroblastic anemia can present with isoniazid use. And the reason being is because sideroblastic anemia is from a deficiency of B6 oftentimes. All right, and so what happens with sideroblastic anemia? So I'm going to say here, a deficiency can cause sideroblastic anemia. All right, so what is sideroblastic anemia? Well, it's basically when you get ringed sideroblasts, which are iron-laden red blood cells, and you're going to have an accumulation of those. All right, so let's look on Google here, and we'll look at a picture of what a ringed sideroblast is. So ringed sideroblast. All right, so you have to know this type of a picture here. So look at the one on the far right of my screen. Um, you see your red blood cell here, and it's got a you got basically these ringed sideroblasts beside it. And so you have an accumulation of the iron around the nucleus of the cell. All right, so these iron-laden erythrocytes will get highlighted whenever you check out somebody's bone marrow aspirate. All right, and so let's just go back to our drawing here. So sideroblastic anemia, here's your cells. You're gonna have the nucleus and you have a ring of iron around it basically. Okay, and so you impair your heme synthesis. And remember, the gene that can get messed up that can also cause sideroblastic anemia is ALAS, A-L-A synthase. So ALAS deficiency can also cause sideroblastic anemia. All right, so super, super high yield tie-ins here. And you need to be able to diagnose that on histology. You need to know that vitamin B6 can cause you to get the sideroblastic anemia. You need to know sideroblastic anemia is associated with isoniazid use because of the deficiency of vitamin B6. You also got to know the other major side effects to look out for with isoniazid use. All right. And so on somebody's labs that has sideroblastic anemia, what's that going to show? Well, on their labs, you're going to have really high iron levels. So high iron. And guess what? If you have high iron, you're going to have high ferritin because ferritin is a storage form of iron. And remember, we said it's an iron-laden erythrocyte. It's just iron encircling this nucleus here. All right, so you have high iron and you have high ferritin. And that's going to basically point you in the direction of sideroblastic anemia. And it's a pretty similar labs for hemochromatosis, actually. Uh, but you'll kind of know based upon the history if you're leaning one way or another. So for now, I want you to know high iron, high ferritin with sideroblastic anemia. Thank you guys so much for joining today. If you found that was helpful, find me on Instagram at Action Potential Mentoring and shoot me a DM saying what your favorite part of today's lesson was. If you have any questions or you'd like some personalized one-on-one -on -one assistance with preparing for the USMLE, learning what it takes to become a stellar applicant and matching it to your dream specialty, DM me the words VIP Mastermind. Again, that's VIP Mastermind. Talk to you soon.